Hi, this is your Sopil Bharatiya and welcome to your Let's Talk. Today we have with us once again Ari Weil, Vice President of Product Marketing at Akamai. Ari, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be back. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, and we are running this series specifically for the upcoming Coupon and Cloud Medicon. And today's focus is going to be on <laughs> multi-cloud and Kubernetes. Uh, if you look at, you know, uh, Kubernetes, if you look at, you know, all this, you know, technology that we're talking about, uh, one of the things that uh, I love to talk about when I talk to Akama is edge, uh, you know, because we are kind of, you know, centralized and then a lot of workloads are moving to edge. So I will talk about, you know, what kind of challenges developer face uh, when they are developing services for the edge and, and what is unique to edge that makes that difficult. But before we get into this problem area, just to be clear for viewers, because the, the thing is, Edge, we are, I think, is still defining the definition of Edge, and it depends on who you talk to. So when we are talking about Edge, what we really mean, and then we'll talk about the challenges. I think that's a great way to start. Um, and the Edge, it's funny because different people will define Edge differently, as you've said. Um, when we talk about the Edge at Akamai, we primarily mean the Internet Edge. So as getting as close to the device or the digital touch point as humanly possible, um, where we think about the cloud and the way that people have thought about cloud providers offering things like edge services, they typically are talking about functions as a service and, and content delivery networks or CDN. Where Akamai is architected something that we feel is unique in the market is the network of services and the network of locations that we have created are all interconnected across the globe. And so in 4,100 points of presence that we maintain, they're all on the same global backbone we are able to provide low double digit latency between all of those different touch points. And as we evolve that edge platform to include distributed cloud, what we're saying is you've got core distributed and edge computing all on the same network. And that provides the ability to maintain low latency and location specificity where applications and workloads require them. First of all, thank you for defining it. Now let's look at the problem area. Uh, what kind of challenges uh, developers face when they are developing s services for the edge? And once again, uh, what makes it so difficult when they're targeting edge? So when a developer starts to architect any application, and we can start with digital natives because increasingly the folks that are probably watching your, your program are digital native developers, you get used to building things in a microservices architecture that aligns to cloud native principles. So it's high performance, it's scalable, uh, you have composable services that you want to create with your cloud resources. But the challenge becomes picking the right partner because when you would deploy on a centralized hyperscaler cloud, for example, like an AWS or a Microsoft Azure or Alibaba or any of the, the clouds that have risen to prominence because they have available self-service compute resources, you are oftentimes developing things using proprietary services on those clouds. And so when you think about, I want to create my first microservice architecture, it could be a, a consumer facing website, for example, that has you know, a web server, object storage, some database capabilities to maintain inventory or what have you. And then you're going to be pushing out that experience via browsers and mobile applications to devices that can work when most of your compute is going to push out fairly static HTML resources, because you can optimize the delivery of those by caching them on a CDN. You can apply some lightweight transformation or image optimization to some of the heavier weight things like images or video that you would be pushing out. But as we see use cases evolve and users become more fickle in the way that they consume applications and resources, users want personalized experiences. They want them to be dynamic. And so I would want my RE experience to be very different from your swamp mill experience, and I would not accept it if somebody said, well, you're both males, you know, you're both of a certain age, we're going to send you the same content. Increasingly, that's not acceptable for consumers in any industry. And so as you look at what that means from an application perspective, it means you're using more data and you're using it in real time, typically closer to the user if you can get there, but to get closer to the user Typically, a developer now has to partner with other platforms beyond a cloud because I'll build my application core on a cloud, and then maybe I'll use a platform as a service for some of my website delivery. Maybe I'll use an edge platform for optimizations and functions. And so I start to create operational complexity as I try to meet my customers' demands 
that is one of the challenges that developers face because when the entire application was initially architected, even if it's using cloud native principles in a core cloud, I cannot disassemble or decompose my architecture and then migrate certain services to one of these other platforms because the implementations are proprietary and then the languages and the protocols that I have to work with tend to change. And so it creates a lot of, con well, not necessarily confusion, but gaps in what the developer knows how to code against. And it doesn't really maintain that, that promise of cloud native that I should have something that is fully portable between clouds. So we see the infrastructure starting to really evolve, or at least the needs of infrastructure evolving to meet this application need. Now let's talk about uh, multi-cloud or multiple clouds. Uh, I mean, it is, you know, just like looking at the edge, the challenge can be the same when you're targeting multiple cloud. Uh, it is kind of challenging for developers to kind of build applications or microservices to take advantages of multiple clouds. And yes, we live in a multi-cloud hybrid cloud world. It's not just public cloud. You can have your own private cloud with open stack. You can, of course, have uh, different clouds from different vendors. And then you, you can, of course, you have edge there. Uh, can you talk about what are some of the major issues that DevOps teams run into when they're trying to build for multi-cloud? And what are they doing? Are they adapting their applications to work efficiently in both cloud and edge? Or what kind of work and they do there? So it's like two full question, what frustrates them and what do they do? Absolutely. So if we look at the way that most companies take advantage of multi-cloud or multiple clouds, it is that. It's multiple clouds. You'll have an application that is optimized or takes advantage of certain capabilities in one cloud provider and then another application, or maybe it's a, a microservice or group of microservices that would take advantage of a different architecture. But if I think about delivering a consistent experience to a user, whether it's gaming or streaming video or you know commerce, hospitality, all of those types of use cases will typically require an end-to-end -end workflow that becomes challenged when I have to deliver that workflow across multiple clouds. Now, that doesn't mean that it's impossible. It certainly is possible with microservices, but the challenge becomes how much data would I have to share in between clouds? And then what are the latency and the cost implications of that? How many protocols do I have to change or how do I have to reauthenticate potentially across multiple clouds that would create bottlenecks or additional overhead in my application? And then the final question becomes, how do I optimize for a consistent experience from a latency and a security perspective if I'm composing across multiple environments? Now, that is the set of challenges that many of the developers face. What can frustrate them is when a developer tries to architect something that should be composable and should be portable, then oftentimes they'll turn to containerized deployments. So they'll say, I want to deploy this in Docker or I want to use Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is rising to prominence as one of the more mature containerized application platforms. But if we think about where that is supposed to provide me with the, the promise of portability, the challenge becomes every major cloud provider has created their own proprietary wrappers around Kubernetes. And if I'm architecting for automation and I create Terraform scripts to deploy new Kubernetes environments, my Terraform scripts have to be unique to each cloud provider. And so now I think my implementation of Kubernetes is unique. My deployment scripting is going to be unique. And now if I have to scale up in a given environment or scale out to a given region, suddenly I have this complexity of maintaining different deployments of Kubernetes where the whole promise of Kubernetes was supposed to provide me with this portability. So that can become a real challenge. Now, if I take one more step further and say, I don't just want to have portability between clouds, but elements of my workload need to run at the edge, the edge providers typically don't have the ability for you to deploy a Kubernetes container or a fleet of Kubernetes clusters out to an edge. They can maybe have their own containers that they would host as a platform as a service, but you don't have the flexibility to say, this is my Kubernetes environment, will you host and run it for me? That's not a, a capability that most edge providers have made available. And so that is also a challenge for a developer as they think, not only are my implementations going to be different across clouds, but I have a limitation now in my ability to deploy a container to the edge. Now, uh, when, once again, we talk about cloud native, or if we talk about multi-cloud, of course, complexity 
becomes a big challenge. Cost also becomes a big challenge. Of course, there are folks like Akamai who are trying to, because the fact is, you know, as you know, Rob Herschel said that, you know, this complexity is not going to go away. We have to learn to deal with it. Uh, can you talk about how developers and DevOps teams kind of deal with this challenge by simplifying their approach to multi-cloud? Because the more complicated you make things, it will get even more complicated. And, and, and then if you can share, of course, if you have a playbook uh, for some of the best practices uh, to kind of uh, deal with the multi-cloud and the complexity. When developers are architecting applications to be cloud native, I think one of the biggest things, uh, the best analogies that I can think about are uh, tied to kitchens. So imagine, you know, a chef's kitchen that you'll see on, on one of the cooking programs that rise to prominence. They're very clean environments. You don't have a lot of superfluous tools. You know, the chef has a really good knife, a solid cutting board, maybe a, a, a mixer and a, you know, very few implements that they would use. Now, you compare that to a QVC kitchen or something where people have bought, you know, a tool for everything. So I've got, you know, all sorts of plastic gadgets all over my kitchen that I can use for anything that I might want to do to prepare a meal. But it ends up creating basically clutter and cruft in the environment. And when you look at the professionals and what they really do to optimize a dish in a kitchen like that, there's very few implements that they really need. And so when we look at developers trying to optimize their cloud environments, the same thing can be true. Most of the cloud providers out there have created a myriad of, of services and solutions that developers can take advantage of that should help them to deploy and manage and scale an application. But the challenge becomes it's so easy to use all of those things that before you realize it, you're incurring costs that are very hard for you to understand. You've got applications where the performance profile is challenging or nuanced depending on the sorts of engagement that an end user or a service might have with other services. And it becomes very challenging to maintain, to scale, and to troubleshoot when there are just so many disparate uh, applications and services running in service ultimately of what the developer is trying to build and manage. Where Akamai has been focused and where we're trying to help people really optimize their cloud deployments is to think, what is the ultimate goal of this application? And then what are some of the key elements that would make the experience that a developer is creating successful? So if you say, as an example, this is a very data intensive application, then you would say the amount of data that I'm transiting between services should be minimized so that I'm not incurring additional cost and latency. And also from a security perspective, so I'm exposing as few endpoints or as few opportunities for an attacker to compromise my data as possible. So that would be one set of considerations. Now you'll also say it's data intensive, but it has to maintain low latency so that the user will have a good and predictable experience. So now you think, well, if there's a lot of data involved, but I've got to maintain low latency, then what am I doing with the data? Is it something where I can query it periodically and cache it closer to the user? Is it something where it changes quite a bit or maybe the data is being created by my user? Now I want to run my, my decision engines, anything that might be working in, in computation on the data, again, closer to the user or closer to that touch point because ultimately that's how I'll maintain the least amount of travel for the data and also maintain that low latency that the application requires. Lately, there's been a third consideration that almost every developer, especially with a data intensive application, really needs to think about, and that's data sovereignty and data locality. Because with all of the privacy regimes that are popping up, with users who are insisting that they get access to information about how you're managing any of their data, maintain the right to be forgotten from a, an application environment or a company altogether, there are a number of restrictions that are now being placed on developers for how their application needs to be architected to manage data and manage performance. And so if we think about you know, bringing these analogies full circle, the fewer places that I can ship and store and process my data, the way that I can think about managing where my data is transited and stored from a capacity and a storage cost perspective, and then thinking about where I need to apply either my company's uh, governance schemes or any sort of uh, you know, government or legal entities requirements on privacy, all of those factor together to think, simplify my architecture, take advantage of proximity and locality wherever I can, and wherever I can, can manage it as well, adhere to open principles so that I have the ability to then take advantage of, let's say, 
one cloud's proximity to my user base in, in one region versus another cloud's proximity to my user base in another one. And so it, it's a confluence of factors that, and, that developers have to keep their arms around. But I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to how much data do I have and where is it? How quickly do I need to let the users access it? And how much processing do I need to do on that data before the user really derives value from that data? And those are the, the three factors that we see driving an awful lot of certainly consumer-facing applications, but increasingly, as people bring sort of their consumer experiences to work, we're seeing that same set of considerations pervade the enterprise. And when you're, you know, talking about the kitchen analogy, I also cook, and I was also thinking, hey, you know what? I often, when I do that, I also get worried about cross-contamination, or it's kind of, in, in, in tech term, it could be seen as a security or vulnerability. Uh, so can you also talk about that because of this complexity or not knowing what is there or a lot of zombie applications, somebody started, nobody closed it. How does maintaining that hygiene can also affect security? Absolutely. It's, it's a huge problem. It's, some people think about it as a cost issue, right? Because I have long-running VMs or long-running processes or maybe just batch processes that I forget about that can increase my costs over time in a cloud. But to your point, one of the bigger concerns recently is you know, these, these vestiges of prior deployments or maybe additional API endpoints or environments that I no longer use, I'm not really thinking about, I'm not actively monitoring. And those can really represent significant exposures and vulnerabilities for businesses and certainly for the developers who are managing those applications. What we found is the uh, ability to do continuous discovery in an environment, that is anything that would discover the APIs that exist in an environment that can give you insight into what might be running on those APIs and also the ability to look at your workloads and understand what information is going from one server to another not only the fact that there's traffic there, but also what type of traffic does that represent becomes a really important factor in cloud. And so what we encourage our customers to think about is as you're architecting your application, think about observability while you're doing it. Not just observability in the sense of log management, because that will give you a historical view of what has been happening so that I can troubleshoot and I can get to a root cause analysis of why something came about, but also discovery and scanning so that you have an idea of what's running across your environment at any given point in time. And one of the lessons that Akamai has learned from leveraging our own cloud to power our applications is just how frequently we need to be performing audits and really looking, in our case, at a, a biweekly, monthly, and quarterly set of processes where we would review what's running in our environment, we would assess the security of what sort of data is running, who has access to it, how are those APIs actually being used by applications or end users or third parties, and then being ready to take action to spin things down or to apply security controls like firewall controls, uh, API security controls, and also ident uh, addressing identity and access management. And so, you know, to your point, I think it's a great thing to highlight for developers that while you're maintaining this notion of portability from cloud to cloud, you also have to maintain visibility and make sure you know how to lock down or spin down applications uh, and services in each of the cloud environments you deploy to. And it's even more of a reason for that uh, goal of really realizing cloud native promises and principles of portability, because the more that I can take action consistently, the more I can take action quickly and be confident that I've got a secure application environment as well as a performant one. Ari, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, talk about multi-cloud edge and Kubernetes. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I look forward to the next discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Swamna. See you soon.